Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this is recording for chapter 12, Defection of Beams and Shaft. Right. Uh, in this chapter, we'll cover the first two parts, which are the elastic curve, and the second one is the slope and displacement by integration method. Right. Uh, for elastic curve, basically, it is defined it just a period by V or nu, okay, Vx. And while the slope and displacement, displacement is this, V, same as uh, the elastic curve. Uh, and then the slope is theta. Theta equals to D, V over D, X. So we look at this. There are three uh, equations for this, uh, for this 12.2, all right? So let's begin with the first one, which is the elastic curve, right? For the elastic curve, okay. So the deflection diagram of the of the longitudinal axis that passes through the centroid of each cross-sectional area of the beam is called the elastic curve, okay, which is characterized by deflection and slope along the along the curve. But mainly it is a uh, deflection, all right. So the thing is, okay, let's let's look at this kind of example, right? The first one here. So as you can see. This one, right? This is a, a beam, right? It is a pin at this point, while at another end, it is fixed, right? And then you try to look somewhere uh, along the line, right? right along the beam, pin. And then you have this kind of diffraction, right? Uh, what you can see here, at the fixed end, there is no diffraction, and then there is no slope, right? At the pin, Basically, there is no deflection, but you can see that there is a slope, right? So, this is the elastic curve, okay? And, of course, when you want to characterize it, you have to write the equation. For instance, pretty common, it is uh, characterized by this deflection, right? So, what you have to do is you have to write the equation of this uh, deflected beam as v x equals to something, right? The v is this displacement at any point, right? That, that's what is the v as function of x. x is okay. For, for instance, you take from the left, so x is this distance, right? x equal to zero at the pin, and then x equal to total length l. For instance, at the at this uh fixed point, right? And then the V varies from the pin, from the left to the right, okay? This is what we call as a elastic curve. Another, another uh, example is this overhang beam, right? The second one, the bottom one, right? Which is a pin at this point, while it is the roller supported at another point, right? Along the line. And then you apply, for instance, the load P at the end. The beam, right? So you can see that the the, the beam here it it, uh, it deflects such a way that between uh, the pin the left and also the roller it is deflected upwards while between the roller and the P and applied your P it is deflected downwards right so this is your V this is your V right and of course it's zero the V is zero at the pin, the support, right? And then it is also zero at uh, the roller, all right? The thing is about this, you need to understand what kind of, what what do this support, right? These various types of supports, what do they, they what, what are their effects on the, deflected beam, all right? So this will be your boundary conditions later on that we will see, right? Okay, next, uh, we continue with the elastic curve. So please uh, remember this, we have seen this before, moment curvature relation, right? We have seen this before and we have learned about this quite extensively, moment curvature relation. So I hope you still remember that for the positive transformation of the moment, it is, 
positive internal moment concave upwards like this, right? While if it is concave downwards like this, so this is a negative internal moment, all right? There is a there is a reason for that. The reason is because there will be like the previous example. It is pretty clear, right? You have this kind of supports, and then you have the load somewhere in the middle, somewhere along the length. Then you have this kind of reflected shape, right? Same goes with this this kind of overhang beam, right? Because you can you can kind of estimate or you can predict the reflected shape of this beam, right? But for instance, you see this beam A here. Okay. It is pinned at D. It is supported by the roller at B. But instead of you just apply P1, like in the previous example, you have another one load, another load, which is P2 here. So it happened. Okay. So how do you know that it concave upward or downwards? How do you know that? For instance, this cantilever beam. Okay, another one, cantilever beam here. It is fixed at A, right? But somewhere in the middle, you apply the load P, then you can you expect that it will deflect downwards, right? But what happens if you apply couple moment M, which is, which oppose the direction of the P, then the moment caused by P, what will happen? So that's why in this case, what you need to do is you need to draw the moment diagram, right? Because the moment diagram will tell you what kind of deflection, what kind of elastic curve that will happen, right? For instance, if you, in this case, this A, right? If you apply the load like this, and then you draw the moment diagram, right? And then you see that from A to C, you have this kind of negative moment, isn't it? While between C and D, you have positive moment. Can you see that? This is negative moment. This is positive moment. Right? So what will happen? What does it mean right there? It means, let's say it means between A and C that you have a negative moment. See? Negative moment. So it will concave downwards. Okay? This is what we see that A, B, and C, you will have uh, the beam to concave downwards, isn't it? While between C and D, because when you draw the internal moment diagram, right, you've got positive moment, it means that between C and D, it will concave upwards like this. Okay, concave upwards. All right? Same goes to this one. Let's change the color. All right, same goes to the this one, okay? If you draw the... Uh, bending moment diagram for this cantilever beam which is loaded like this right e and couple moment m you see that okay between a and this point you have negative moment while between this point to the rest of that you have positive moment what does it mean by that negative moment okay negative moment is concave downwards so that's why it is concave downwards like this between a and this point right and then between this point to the to the end, to the right end, it is positive moment, right? So it means that it will concave upwards, right? Concave upwards, there, right? So the point that uh, this concave upwards and downwards they change, we call it as an inflection point. Inflection, inflection point, right? So this is your elastic curve, right? So please, look, uh, please uh, read some more about this. Hogging and sagging. I mean, it's just a term for concave downwards and concave upwards. All right. And uh, please check this as well. But we will go straight to these equations, which are the most important part. Okay, because pretty much we have uh, we have uh, we are done with the elastic curve because we just the most important thing about the elastic curve here is you have to understand that. It is characterized by V X K or V V D X, right? Theta goes to V V D X. Why this V? V is the what is V? V is the deflection of the beam. Alright? Theta, what is theta? Theta is the first derivative of V, which is the 
slow, all right? Okay, but how can we find this V and theta? So we go to this next one, which is slope and displacement by integration, all right? Okay, so uh, you can read this, but the most important thing here is are actually these four equations. Okay, this one, this one, and this one. All right. So, E I, E I is flexural rigidity. What is E? What is I? E is the the materials Young's modulus, isn't it? For instance, the for steel it is two hundred Newton Pascal. For instance, All right. And then the I is the geometric property, which is the moment of inertia about material axis, right? So what happened here is you have these four three equations, okay? The I for general rigidity times force derivative of V with respect to X, okay? And then this actually equals to WX. What is W? W is distributed load. Okay, distributed load, right? If you integrate, if you integrate this, okay, you will get what? You will get you, uh, and then of course, oh, sorry, WX is dv over the x. Okay, we have seen this in uh six point two, right? So if you integrate this, you will get this third derivative, okay, just one uh order lower, right? And then this is your Vx, and if you integrate it, this is actually the, the, the first derivative of m, right? And then if you integrate further, you will get the second derivative, and this is equals to m, right? So you have three equations. The first one is the fourth derivative di times fourth derivative of v, and this is the equals to distributed load w, right? If you integrate it, you will get lower order which is the third order right and then this is equals to the shear force v right and you integrate further you will get the i uh, second derivative of v with respect to x equals to any moment so which one to choose to solve for this the answer is simple it depends on your problem all right what is given all right so why why do we want to use these equations can you see that you have v here you see this v Force derivative of v, third derivative of v, and also the second derivative of v. This v is your what? Deflection, isn't it? So this will give you the elastic curve. So when you want to find your elastic curve, you will take it. You, you will have to find it from this one of these four, the three equations, right? Uh, and then this is another same convention for this. Basically, here, I mean, when you use these equations. Just remember that the V is positive going upwards. If, not if, the positive V is going upwards, right? V going upwards positive, right? And if your X positive going from left to right, okay? See this X going from left to right. So your theta will be positive. You see your slope will be positive. For instance, at this point, you take the tangent, tangent line, right? And then the theta is positive measured counterclockwise, all right? Okay. In the case of uh, you have your x from right to left, okay? In this case, from right to left, the other way around. So what happens is that in this case, your theta will be positive clockwise, all right? That's the only difference between this, right? Depending on your x, because later on when you do the cassation method, you can take left or right, right? Right? So if you take left, then that's fine. You will use this positive sign convention of x from left to right, which is this one, right? But if you take the right hand side when you do the cassation method, okay, to analyze, then actually you need to use this positive sign convention, which is positive x from right to left okay the other way around so what happens is that your theta will be positive clockwise not counterclockwise right and please uh go through these uh boundary conditions we, we have learned these boundary conditions in statics right uh, i don't wish to repeat here but please look at them okay what 
what does roller do to deflection and moment what does pin do to deflection and moment please look at this and i'm serious about this because you need to you need to understand this conversation otherwise otherwise you cannot solve the plastic curve later on right the, the you cannot find the uh, integration constants right so okay now we go to the example we see this simple example okay so you have this cantilever beam right it is fixed at point b here okay and then it's subjected to the vertical look at another end this p particular p right so the question asks you to determine the equation of elastic curve e i is constant e i is factor rigidity i mean constant e constant i right so what is the equation of elastic curve here it is v v x all right so how do you find this how, how how do you find the equation of elastic curve like i said okay let's go back to this remember that you have three equations right the fourth derivative the third derivative, and the second derivative which one do you want to start with in this case you will start with the second derivative all right the i second derivative okay of displacement deflection v equals to m x so your ei is constant right that's fine just leave it as ei so you just need to find what is your m right the internal bending moment throughout the line along this line line is x go to zero from left to x go to l at point b all right so what you have to do you cut okay take left hand side and then this is what you got right this one is what you got and you can you will express this okay remember this use the correct sign convention okay positive moment if you take left hand side you will go from uh it will go from counterclockwise right this end all right so you have this equation i don't wish to repeat this is from chapter six in particular right so you put it in this equation okay you realize that this is ei but times the second derivative of v right equals to m and your m is ex right so you integrate it becomes ei dv over dx right what happened to the right hand side you will become uh, you integrate this it will become p x squared over two isn't it plus c1 okay so your problem is actually this c1 and later on you integrate one more time you will have your this one which is your display uh, deflection which is, which is this is your uh elastic curve okay and then what happened to the right side x cube over three so it becomes six right and then plus c one x plus c two so now from these two equations right you have two unknowns which are c1 okay and c2 right okay uh i forgot to mention this okay these are the, the three equations okay you have to choose why we chose the, the m the third one which is the second derivative because from this problem you can get the bending moment okay you can you can have your bending bending uh moment equation okay so how do you find this elastic constant? I mean, this is the your elastic curve, all right? But you cannot leave it like this. You need to find what it, what are the elastic constants C one and C two. So how do you find this? So look at look back here. I mean, we're going to show later on. But let let's look at this one. You see, at this point, at this point B, it is fixed, right? What does it mean by that? The V is zero, Z, obviously, and the theta slope or second derivative uh, first derivative of v dv over dx equals to zero as well so these two are your boundary conditions so you put it in this okay you put in the first one this is the slope equals to zero at okay slope not this one so here only dv dx okay the slope equals to zero dv dx equals to zero at x equal to l right and the v equals to zero at what at where x equal to l okay you put in you put this body conditions right at when the x equal to l the dv dx equals to zero when x equal to l 
the V equals to zero. Then this is these are the two equations that you you have done. Okay, so you, you arrange them because it becomes a simultaneous equation, right? So you can find the first constant C1 as this and the second constant C2 as this, right? You put this back, C1 and C2, and you will get your EI, so not EI, your V equals to this, all right? And of course, if you put into the first one, this uh, first derivative dv over dx, you will get the slope equation, all right? Both these are elastic, elastic curve, but then they are, they are, I mean, you see that the theta here actually is simply the first derivative of v. Just differentiate v with respect to x, and then you will get theta, right? So these are the elastic curves, right? Okay, so we look at another example. Uh, okay, we look at an exa another example, right? Okay, what happens if you have this kind of simply supported beam, which is pin, um, which is pin at the right hand side, the right end, and it is roughly supported at the left hand side, right? And then there is a symmetrical load uh, in triangular shape, okay? Triangular distributed load like this, W load, all right? And symmetrical about the center at x equal to L over 2, okay? all right? So the total length is L, L over 2 half, and another half, L over 2, all right? And then you can see that, I mean, you can predict the elastic curve to have the maximum deflection at the, at the center here. This is the maximum right and then you can take the x from left to right so the, the question asks you to find what is the maximum deflection take it the i is constant right so here actually you can take the whole length okay you can analyze the whole length what because it is symmetrical isn't it about this axis okay which is in the middle of the beam right in the middle of the load itself so if you take left or right it is the same it's just mirrored right the, the left and right so we we let's uh exploit this symmetry right so if you take symmetric uh symmetrical part you can you can for instance you take just the left okay just take the left and side here and then you take between x go to zero to x go to l okay the left hand side so we need to come up with what is the what is the internal bending moment m right because we want to put into this equation right so how to do that you cut okay remember we will only analyze the left hand side because it's symmetrical right you cut what you have okay before you cut please remember this please find the support reaction first okay i'm going to show you you that you need to know what are the support reactions especially at the, when you take left hand side you need to know what kind of support reaction that you have at this roller all right so your support reaction is this w not l over four okay and then you cut you take left hand side right and then this is the distributed load okay why it is W equals to W to W naught over LX? Hmm? What's the reason? So you need to go back here. Okay, look at this uh, triangle, right? And then you draw. This is the to load, right? W equals to zero at this left, and then here it is W naught, isn't it? In the middle, right? Yes, in the middle, the B node. And then, if you take, for instance, this is X, right? And then this is L over 2, is it? And then, what is this? What is this height? It is, it is your W, right? This is your W. So, you can use this common triangle, W over X equals to w node over l over 2 that's why you you can express w as w node 2 w node over l times x right okay 
why do you need to have this? The reason is because when you want to find the equivalent load, okay, acting at the one third from the right hand side, yeah. So you need to have this W, otherwise you cannot do that, right? Okay, and then you you express this. Make sure you know how to draw this to diagram. Okay, this is basically from chapter six. So you will you will have your uh, internal value moment m as this, right? And then you put in into the equation. Okay, the second derivative. That's why you find you use m. Go to second derivative, right? And then you put your your m, right? Okay, and then you integrate once. It becomes like this with your first integration constant c one, right? You integrate one more time. You integrate one more time, all right? Oh, sorry. You, uh, you integrate one more time. You will have your, your V, okay? The reflection equation or elastic curve. And then here you have C1 and C2, two constants, okay? Like I said, basically this, the equation asks you to find what? The equation asks you to find maximum reflection, right? So this, from this, this thing, you can find your maximum reflection, right? But the thing is, actually there are two ways. One is you take dv dx equal to zero because that will be your maximum one, right? And then you find this x. By the way, you need to find c1, okay? Or actually from this, this thing, we already said that the maximum reflection will occur at x equal to l over two, right? In the middle, right? Yes, you can put x equal to l over two here, but you, you still don't know what are the constants c1 and c2. So what you have to do is you put the boundary conditions, okay? You put the boundary conditions. So how do you know your boundary conditions? That's why you need to understand at this roller, x equal to zero, what you have, you have v equals to zero, right? At x equal to zero, isn't it? And the one is what? Another one is at x equal to l over 2, okay, in the middle here, right, your theta or dv dx, your slope is 0 because it is a maximum point, right, maximum deflection. So take slope here, it is 0, right. In this case, can you take this v equals to 0 at x equal to l? Can you do that? The answer is not. It, this is this this is correct. This boundary condition is correct, but you cannot put into the equation because remember the equation you derive this equation between x equal to zero and until x equal to l only. So don't put x equal to l v equal to zero. Okay, it won't be correct. So that's why here as uh, at x equal to zero v equal to zero right at the p uh, at the roller and at x equal to l which is in the middle your dv x equal to zero. Okay, the slope is zero because you have, this is where at x equal to l that you have the maximum deflection. Okay, and then you put into these two equations, okay, these two equations, and then you'll you'll see that your c2 equals to zero and your c1 equals to this. Right? Put back c1, c2 equals to zero, and c1 equals to this into your equation, then this is your elastic curve, right? And the question is to find what? To find the maximum deflection, and it occurs at x equal to l over two. You put x equal to x equal to x equal to l over 2 back into this equation okay it is x equal to x x equal to l over 2 sorry x equal to l over 2 and x equal to l over 2 here and then you will have your maximum diffraction as this express as this all right so this is the end of your uh chapter 12 reflection of beams and shelf right thank you